Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. As the shadow, Cranston is gifted with hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's story, The Mark of the Black Widow. <laughs> Suppose we have our coffee in here in the study, Margot. Oh, I'd love to, Dr. Grant. In fact, I've been waiting for years for an excuse to see the inside of this room. Haven't you reminded me? Yes. If I'd anticipated this opportunity, Dr. Grant, I'd have brought along my camera and notebook. I see. I, I think you have an exaggerated idea about the contents of this room. Oh, but it's fascinating. Just look around this place, Lamont. There's mummy cases and statues and old stone carvings. Yes. I presume that most of these pieces are Egyptian, aren't they, Dr. Graham? Yes, that's right. I did a good deal of work in Egypt about 20 years ago. You know, excavations and that sort of thing. I should imagine that there's a fascinating story that goes with every one of these relics. Some of them have a legend, yes, Margot. About a pharaoh's curse, perhaps? Or an evil spirit? <laughs> Margot's been reading too many horror stories, Doctor. No, no, she hasn't for months. I myself have seen too many examples of strange misfortunes. It had befallen the defilers of certain tombs to treat that statement lightly. Oh, really? Well, I was only kidding, you know, Doctor. Well, I personally have been exposed to one of those ancient curses. What say? I've got to hear more about this. Well, it's a very long and I'm quite sure a very dull story, so we'll save it for some other time, shall we? Besides, this is not a night for mystic yarns. See, the moon is too bright and the sky is full of... <laughs> what, but someone threw a rock through that window. Yes. It just missed your head, Doctor. Look, I... look, someone's running across the lawn. Well, it's too late to catch him, whoever it was. Say, there seems to be a note attached to this stone. Well, yes. Uh, perhaps you'd better read it, Doctor. Let me see it. Listen to this. You remember Egypt, the Pharaoh's tomb. He who was dead is returning... When the votes are cast, I remind you of our duty. The signature is the drawing of a spider. What in the world is it all about? Do you understand the doctor? Perfectly. He who was dead is returning. Lamont, that story I said I'd tell you some other time. Yes? I'll tell it to you now because it concerns this note I just received. Do you mind? Mind? I should say not. Well, about 20 years ago, three other scientists and myself, all of us young and ambitious, were working on the excavation of a tomb on the upper Egyptian Nile. One day, we broke through a hidden wall and came upon a room that was almost crammed to the ceiling with rare and precious jewels. We stood in awe at the entrance to that room. Our eyes dazzled by the... Taylor! Oh, do, do you see what I see? Oh, it's... Yes! There can't be this many precious jewels in the world. Hey, fellas, what did you find? Oh, oh, you think that was worth digging for, Willoughby? Worth digging for? Can you... Worth digging for? What a joke! What a joke! Well, what do we do now? What do you mean? Do we notify the authorities and turn this over to them? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, I guess so, of course. Why? What? I'm asking why. Why should we give up this fortune? Yes, but Taylor, that's well, customary. It's a thing to do. We... Well, who would ever have to know about it? Only we four have the knowledge of this hidden room. Now, do we tell the authorities? Taylor, you're not serious about this? Why, if we were found out, we'd be disgraced, ruined in our profession. Wouldn't a few million dollars compensate that ruin? Taylor's right, Hollister. Of course I'm right. All we have to do is keep quiet and we're millionaires. Millionaires! Why, we could buy the world! So you see, Marco and Lamont, three of us did keep quiet. But Hollister talked. He told the authorities about our discovery. We were all resentful of what we thought was his disloyal treachery. We even made idle threats on his life. 
Yes, I was in accord with the others. My only excuse now is that, well, that I was very young. However, we soon forgot those threats as we lost ourselves in hard work. And then one day, when our job was almost done, the four of us were standing in the main excavation. Suddenly, we heard a shout of warning from the bank above. Look out! Look out below! The wall is caving in! Frantically, we scrambled for the opposite embankment. Then from behind us, we heard a cry of distress. Wait! I twisted my ankle! Help me! It was Hollister. We turned and started back to him, and then... <laughs> we were too late. Hollister was buried beneath that handle. Oh, oh. The laborers dug for his body all that night and into the next day, but it wasn't found. The next evening we sailed for the States. What a horrible death. No, no, you're wrong. You see, Hollister didn't die. What? We learned later that he reached one of the tunnels before the landslide occurred and covered him. And three days later, he emerged from the tomb alive. Well, that's remarkable. Oh, but say, that's part of the message then. He who was dead is returning. Exactly. Hollister came back to the States today. He's been in Egypt all these years. Done some remarkable work, too. What does the rest of the message mean? That doing your duty when the votes are cast. Well, you see, Hollister's name is up for membership in the American chapter of the Royal Order of Scientists. Perhaps he feels that we will blackball him because of our ancient grudge. Is it quite an honor to belong to the society? Well, the greatest honor that can be bestowed on a scientist. Naturally, Hollister's anxious to get it. Then you think this message is from Hollister? I'm not sure. But he has nothing to fear. Neither Taylor, Willoughby, or myself have any ill feeling toward him. How does he feel about all of you? Oh, that's a different story. I've heard reports that he thinks that landslide was a deliberate attempt on his life, which, of course, is not true at all. Well, that explains everything in the message but the signature. Oh, you mean the drawing of a spider? Yes. Well, that drawing was on the wall of the room that was filled with jewels. The symbol of the spider is an ancient, never-failing Egyptian curse. Death. Next member will vote, please. Next, put the ball in the box. Your vote, if you please, gentlemen. Place ball and box. Cast your ballot. Ball and box. Your ballot. Ballot. Mr. Raymond Hollister. Yes? Will you stand, please? You have petitioned for membership in the Royal Order of Scientists. I have. I regret to inform you, sir, that one black ball having been dropped in the box, your application is rejected. I knew it. I knew they'd do this to me. Mr. Hollister, please. This is their second attack on me. And believe me, this time it shall not pass an answer. Lamont, I asked you to come here tonight to help Taylor Willoughby and me find Hollister. I see, Dr. Grant. Yes, we must find him. We've got to convince him that we were not responsible for his being rejected to our membership. Uh, you say, Mr. Taylor, that Hollister disappeared the day after the voting took place? Yes, that's right. Well, isn't there any way of finding out who did block Allen, Dr. Grant? No. No way in the world, Margot. No, there isn't any. My, I'm warm. My dinner jacket seems to be a bit too much tonight. Uh, Grant, I think you should tell Mr. Cranston about Hollister's threat, too. Oh, no, yes, that's right. Well, maybe it seems the secretary of the club told us later that Hollister vowed vengeance against all three of us. Vengeance? <sighs> yes. Yes, that's right. Well, if he seems to have vanished so completely, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Well, frankly, I am worried about it, Mr. Cranston. Hollister's crazed brain is liable to seek complete revenge. Oh, no, I'm not worried on that score, Taylor. Are you, Willoughby? I say, are you, Willoughby? Oh, he's falling asleep. Maybe it's the heat in that dinner jacket that did it. No, I can't say that I blame him. It's such a sultry night. Will it be? Come on, old man. Wake up. Uh, wait, gentlemen. The sidelights are poor. Put on that overhead light. Why? Why, what's the trouble? There you are. Will it be? Will it be? What's wrong with him, Lamont? Will it be is dead. <laughs> Where are we going tonight? Want to explore this get together? No, no. Well, why are the mystery? The two are we going to visit? Mr. Willoughby. Oh, I see. Well, that's it. Mr. Willoughby? He's dead, Lamont. Yes, I know. Well, did you, did you plan a meeting at any special place? Oh, yes. Under an old tombstone, perhaps. Oh, no. A much cheerier place than that. Where? The morgue. Oh, well, the what? I'm very curious to learn just why Mr. Willoughby died so suddenly. Uh, are you going to examine his body? Well, not exactly, Mongo. That's going to be a job for the shadow. Go ahead. Get out. 
sleeping peacefully tonight, my pretty. <laughs> I like to see that. It shows that we're all friends here. Yes, all friends. Uh, this is it down. I must open it. Oh, you're rather standoffish, my pretty. Oh, no, no, you're not too pretty, are you? But you see, I like the lids open so that you all may become acquainted. You're all brothers now, you know. Yes, brothers and dead. Whether you be rich or poor. Hey? <laughs> hey, okay. what was that? What was that? Did someone speak? I spoke. Oh, who are you? I am called the Shadow. The Shadow? But I don't see you. No, my hypnotic powers have clouded your mind, made me invisible to your eyes. Oh. <laughs> and that's very clever, yes. <laughs> very clever. Yes, you're a remarkable man, Mr. Shadow. Take it on the word of the mall keeper. These bodies, all these bodies here, are they in your care? Oh, yes, 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 of course. Among these bodies, is there one named Willoughby? He came here last night, died very suddenly. Oh, that one, yes. He's over there on that table. He's the hot case, you know. Have you yourself noticed anything unusual about the body? No, no different from the others. If you don't mind, I'd like to examine him myself. I don't mind if he doesn't. <laughs> now, let me see. Head untouched. No marks on neck, chest. Say, this, this gelatin substance on the chest, covering a little red mark. Have you noticed this before? No. I never pay much attention to those things in a routine case of death. In the future, old man, you should. Then you learn just as I have that this man's death was not routine. It was murder. The morgue? No. Taylor and Dr. Grant. Hmm. Lying people. They may not be before we get them. What do you mean, Lamont? I just examined Willoughby's body in that undertaking parlor. And? Mr. Willoughby was murdered, Margot. Lamont? How? I don't know yet. Then Hollister did carry out his threat. How'd you go, Margot? Too early to accuse anyone right now. Have you notified the police, Lamont? No. I didn't think it advisable yet. What makes you believe that Mr. Willoughby was murdered? A red mark that I discovered on his chest. A red mark that was covered with a gelatin-like substance. Oh, uh, Lamont, uh, come in. I left the door open. Oh, Miss Lane, I, I didn't realize that you'd come along. I, you must pardon my appearance, oh, please. It's all right, Doctor. I've seen men in a search for you before. Uh, come into the study. Taylor's here. I called him. Come along, Mother. All right. Oh, good evening, Mr. Cranston. Oh, you too, Miss Lane. Good I'm going to apologize sir. once more for my appearance, Miss Lane. It was so warm. I think that... nothing of it, Doctor. I have a dressing gown around here someplace. <laughs> Knowing the doctor as I do, Miss Lane, he won't feel easy until he's properly attired. Here's your dressing gown, Doctor. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Taylor. There we are now. What is all this about, Lamont? Well, Dr. Grant, first of all, I have just learned that your associate, Mr. Willoughby, was murdered. Murdered? Hollister. Hollister's making good his friend. It's too early to accuse anyone yet, Mr. Taylor. Our main concern now is to save both of you from meeting Willoughby's fate. Well, is there really any danger? Yes, I'm sure there is. But Lamont, how do you... Uh, Dr. Grant! Quick, catch him, he's falling. Dr. Dr. Grant, uh, Margot, get that chair over here. I can't... Dr. Grant! He's dead. No! Oh, this is too much. I'm the last one left. I'm going for the police. Come back here, Taylor. No! No, I'm going to protect myself. That was a silly thing, but... Margot, come here. Yes? Look here. Do you see this red mark on the doctor's chest? Yes. The yes. same gelatin substance, the same I found on Willoughby. But this time I recognize the mark. What is it? It's the bite of a poisonous insect. And unless I miss my guess, that insect is a spider. The ancient Egyptian symbol of death. <laughs> What on earth are you doing crawling around the room on your hands and knees? I'm looking for a very important piece of evidence. Well, you're also looking very silly. Well, if Taylor really went for the police, I want to find this evidence before the good defenders of the law overrun the house. But if you're trying Margo, to... Margo, please stand right where you are. Why? Don't what? move. 
My evidence is on your shoe top. Oh, what is it? If I'm not mistaken, it's a deadly poisonous black widow spider. Oh, look Ready now. There. I've knocked him off your shoe top. Oh. Get me that ashtray, quick. Here. Here you are. I want to catch it alive. Oh, you got him. He's under that ashtray. Oh, it's huge, isn't it? One of the biggest of the species. Uh, Margot, will you answer the phone, please? Yes, sir. Hello? Hello. Is Mr. Cranston there? Yes. Who is this, please? This is Mr. Taylor's valet. Would you ask Mr. Cranston if he could come to Mr. Taylor's home at once? Yes. What's the trouble? Mr. Taylor has just been shot. Right this way, sir. Have you called a doctor? The doctor just left, sir. The wound serious? The doctor didn't tell me, sir. In this room here, sir. Oh, thank you. I... Is that you, Cranston? Yes, Mr. Taylor. How are you feeling? Oh, fair. Just fair. The bullet grazed my shoulder. Now, tell me, what happened? Well, I... I really don't know. I thought that you left us to go to the police. Yes, yes, that was my intention. But when I left Dr. Grant's house, I saw someone lurking in the doorway across the street, and I... Well, I became panicky and came right here to my study, and, intending to call the police from here. I see. And then what happened? Well, when I picked up the phone, something or someone was moving behind that curtain. I replaced the phone, and then the shot was fired. That's, that's all I remember. I see. You didn't actually see your assailant? No, no, but it was Hollister. I know it was. Who else would make an attempt on my life? Hmm. And may I see the wound, please? Well, the uh, doctor said I shouldn't be disturbed. Oh, is this the coat you were wearing? Yes, yes. You can see yourself where the bullet penetrated. Hmm. The gun must have been fired at very close range, Mr. Taylor. The powder burns indicate that the gun was within a foot of your shoulder when it was fired. I, yes, yes, it was close. But I thought that you said that you were fired on from those curtains. They're all about 15 feet from the phone. Well, I... Uh, uh, see here, Cranston, are you doubting my story? No, not at all, Mr. Taylor. I'm just trying to get the facts straight. Well, perhaps you'd better come back tomorrow morning. I I can think more clearly then. Yes, sir, that'll give you more time. What do you mean? Oh, nothing, Mr. Taylor, not a thing. Good night. <laughs> Margo, I called to tell you that I'm sending that box containing the Black Widow spider over to you in the morning. I want you to take it to Mr. Taylor's house. You have to seek advice from him as to whether or not it's really poisonous. And pay particular attention to his reactions. In the meantime, the shadow has a call to me. You say that you found this spider in Dr. Grant's study, Miss Lane? Yes. Yes, that's right. Well, why have you brought it to me? Well, Mr. Cranston thought that you were an authority on such things and could tell us if the insect is really poisonous. Oh, this was Mr. Cranston's idea, hmm? uh, Yes. Well, my laboratory is downstairs. Would you care to come down while I make the examination? Why, yes, thank you. Uh, this way, please. Uh, would you mind opening that door, Miss Lane? My shoulder, you know. Oh, yes. How is your shoulder? Is, is the one here? Oh, yes. Yes, very nicely. Uh, you first, Miss Lane. All right. Is, it, is there a light? Yes, right on the wall. Oh. There we are. I realize that you must have many more important things to do, Mr. Taylor. And it's just a spider, but just a question. You didn't keep up the pretense any longer, Miss Lane. I know perfectly well why you're here, why Cranston sent you. He's a terror. He knows that's a poisonous spider, and I believe that he has a pretty good idea what it was doing in Dr. Grant's study, doesn't it? I don't know what you're talking about. But he did make one mistake. He sent you here alone. Wait a minute, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> How? What do you mean? That door that we entered has been locked and bolted. That's the only exit from this room. Oh, and incidentally... I might mention that the walls are soundproof, quite immune to screams. Well, I don't understand why you're doing this to me. It's all very simple. You come to me with a curiosity about poisonous black widow spiders. Because of that interest, I am going to exhibit many of them for you by turning them loose in this room. What was that? <laughs> I forgot. We have company, very distinguished company. A gentleman that you have heard a great deal about. Who do you mean? Hollister. The missing Dr. Hollister. You, you had him in prison here? <laughs> then it wasn't Dr. Hollister who committed the murder. It was you, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> this 
is Dr. Hollister. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. In a cage. You have him in a cage like some wild beast. <laughs> That's an excellent simile, considering his appearance at this point. Oh, look at him. It's his eyes and sunken cheeks. Yes, yes. That's what comes of not eating for a week. Why, you, you inhuman thing. That man is on the verge of salvation, even death. You must release him at once. That's what I intend to do. He shall keep you company down here while you both entertain my collection of black widow spiders. <laughs> You'll be released soon. Oh, so very soon. What are you doing? These boxes contain the spiders. I'm going to release the catch. Then I shall leave you both here in their company. They are hungry, too. <laughs> Even more hungry than Dr. Hollister. All right, Miss Lane. Now shall we get about it? <laughs> what was that? I wouldn't release those spiders if I were you, Mr. Taylor. Who speaks? Where are you? I am right here in this room with you, Mr. Taylor. All right. I see no one. Perhaps when I tell you my name, you'll know why. Who are you? Men call me the Shadow. The Shadow? No. Oh, you've heard of me. Then you know why I'm here, Mr. Taylor. No. No, you shan't spoil my revenge. I've waited too long, too long. Exactly, too long and too late, Mr. Taylor. We'll see about that. Don't open that box. You can't stop me. Yes, I can by taking it away from you. Wait. What happened? Give me back that box. So you can add to your list of victims. Sorry, Mr. Taylor. What do you mean? You've already killed Willoughby and Dr. Grant. Oh, so you know that, do you? Well, what of it? What if I did kill them? Why? Why did you do it? Because I wanted to avenge the wrong that was done me by Hollister. He cheated me out of a fortune. A fortune. He wouldn't keep quiet about those jewels we found. No, he had to be righteous. And because of that righteousness, I've been a poor struggling scientist all my life. That's why I killed Willoughby and Grant. So that their murder could be blamed on him. So you admit the killing? Certainly, why not? None of us are leaving here anyway. Keep away from this box of spiders. <laughs> you think your power of invisibility can conquer me, don't you, Shadow? But I know a way to put us on even terms. By putting out these lights. No, stop it! Stop it! Too late! You're too late! I have also had the spiders. And when I open the box, they'll destroy you both. Taylor, <laughs> don't believe those spiders, you fool. A nice touch. Death in the dark. They'll get you too. Now, now they won't. I shall wait in here with Dr. Hollister. Mother, climb to the head of the stairs. You'll be safer there. I'll find that light switch. They'll find her. No matter where she goes, they'll find her. No, they won't, Taylor. Hollister. You didn't pick a safe place after all. Hollister. Let <laughs> the door me. Let Hollister. I found the light. explained the whole case to Commissioner Weston, he agreed that Taylor's death should be listed as accidental. And how is Dr. Hollister? Oh, he'll be all right in a week or so. Well, Lawrence, how did Taylor ever get the spider to bite Willoughby and Dr. Grant? It was a rather ingenious device. Do you recall the gelatin-like substance that I found on the bodies of both men? Yes. The spider was encased in a specially prepared capsule, which in both cases Taylor slipped into the clothing of the murdered men. This capsule... Melted when exposed to heat. The heat of a human body. Hmm. Our boy was very clever. I first suspected Taylor when he chose to be shot rather than be bitten. Particularly when the shot was quite obviously self-inflicted. Hmm. Our boy's pretty clever, too. Uh -huh. You know, Lamont, that for the past three nights, I've dreamt that spiders were crawling all over me. Well, that's understandable. This experience has had one regrettable effect on my life, though. And what's that? I shall never again enjoy reading about little Miss Moffat. <laughs> the weed of crime has bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> 